game shot with one tenth of a second left on the clock. Tucker swats it in. Afterwards, the NBA enacted the Trent Tucker rule. According to the rule, when less than three tenths of a second remain on the game clock, a player can only tip in a pass. If a player catches the pass, sets and shoots, the basket doesn't count. What we want to know is the rule valid? Or can a player get off a shot fast enough to make the NBA rethink the rule? To find out, we brought in a man who can really knock him down. NBA three-point champ, sharpshooter, Jason Capono. Jason's one of the purest shooters in the league. After years of practice, his three-step technique is second nature. Catch the ball, set the body, and release a deadly accurate shot. The rule is, 0.3 seconds, you can't catch and shoot it, but we think you can. To find out if Jason can work fast enough to beat three-tenths of a second, we wire him up with sensors that will precisely measure the time it takes him to catch the pass, set up for the shot, and fire away. I'm going to put this tactile sensor on your middle finger because that's the finger that'll have the ball against it the longest. Are you up to it? Of course. It's on here, right? <laughs> All right. To assist Jason, we brought along one of the game's rising young stars, NBA point guard Jordan Farmar. He'll handle the inbound pass, and the clock starts the instant Jason's fingertips touch the ball. The number Jason is trying to beat is three-tenths of a second. To put that in perspective, it takes three-tenths of a second to blink our eyes. Can Jason do it? Catch, set, and shoot a basketball in less time than it takes to blink an eye? Sorry, Capono. No go. To catch, set, and shoot took 0.38 seconds. Not nearly fast enough to challenge the Trent Tucker rule. So, Jason, what we're seeing here, this is where you caught the ball, where you see the slight spike in pressure. This is where you reposition your finger on it without even realizing you were doing it, and then your shot is happening with this large spike right there. The sequence breaks down like this. Nine hundredths of a second to catch the ball and one-tenth of a second to shoot it. The biggest variable in the sequence is his set. It takes Jason a whopping 19 hundredths of a second to set up for the shot. If you could somehow catch it in the act of shooting so that you don't have to Good actually position. grip the ball, then it's going to be even faster. So what did you just learn over there about what, what are you going to change? I need to just practice it and, you know, catch the ball and just going straight to my shot rather than trying to catch it and set myself up. Using his normal technique, Jason's deadly accurate, but he'll never beat three-tenths of a second. Ball. Jordan. So we bring in college coach Bob Williams. Williams is an expert at shooting technique and he'll help Jason with the mechanics of a super quick release. He's not going to be working on perfect form. He's working on catch and release and get rid of it as quick as he can. But he has so many years of experience and his shooting form is so impeccable that his form will still be good no matter how quick he goes. His follow through, his release will be, be excellent. How coachable is Jason? Can a few brief pointers somehow translate to a release that is quick enough to beat the three tenths of a second on the clock? Okay, ready? Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Two, two. Jason did it in 
in less time than it takes to blink an eye. He caught a pass, quickly positioned himself, and shot. The readings back it up. When we look at the actual data here, we saw when he did the test, the timer said 0.22 seconds. You see initially there's this small peak as he catches the ball and then adjusts it for the shot. And then as Jason actually takes the shot, it takes about a tenth of a second for that to happen. The total amount of time between the beginning and the end came to 0.22 seconds. He's clearly able to catch and shoot in under three tenths of a second. So does his blazing fast mark really make a case for changing the NBA's rule? Actually, no. In fact, it confirms the rule's validity. Remember, the rule covers situations in which there are less than three-tenths of a second left on the clock. Jason's shot easily beat three-tenths of a second, but he couldn't be two-tenths of a second. So Jason didn't make a case to change the rule. But his shot makes a case to change the way the NBA measures time. After all, the sports of swimming and track use clocks to measure events in hundreds of a second. Split seconds are vital. It decides who wins and who goes home. It's a chance to go to the finals. It's a chance to win a championship. So it definitely matters. Maybe the rule needs to be changed. With a good that pass is. and a good shot. Change the rule to the Jason Capono rule now. Jason made his case by catching, setting, and shooting a ball faster than it takes to blink. We call those results truly eye-opening. Coming up on Sports Science, hit the shots that make goalies miss and batters whiff. Curling kicks and curving balls that amaze and baffle. What's the secret to these mind benders? And which breaks more, a pitcher's curveball or a soccer star's free kick? That's next on Sports Science, Tricks of the Trade.